Observing a system or a process while it is in operation is an important part of the learning process. We can learn and understand a lot by just watching. However, to understand what happens to a process when we change certain input factors, we have to do more than just watch. We have to change the factors in a controlled way. This means that to really understand cause and effects relationships in the system, we must deliberately change the input variables to the system and observe the change in the output. In other words, we need to conduct experiments. Investigators perform experiments in virtually any fields of inquiry, usually to discover something about a particular process or system. This course is about planning and conducting experiments and about analyzing the resulting data so that valid and objective conclusions are attained. In general, experiments are used to study the performance of processes and systems. A process or system is a combination of operations, machines, methods, people, and other resources that transform some inputs, often a material, into an output that is one or more response variables. It can be anything as diverse as baking a cake, designing, building, and launching a spacecraft, managing a team, or training for a marathon. Each process or system has some inputs as the ingredients in the cake recipe, and some outputs or outcomes or response variables as the performance of the team or the time to run the 42 kilometers of a marathon. Each process or system is affected by several factors that can potentially change the outcome of the process. Some of these factors can be controlled, as the number of eggs in the cake recipe, but some cannot, as the weather temperature and humidity during the marathon. To illustrate this, let's take a very simple example of our everyday life, the time to commute from home to work or school. Even if you haven't done any organized experiment, we are always trying to minimize the commuting time. So let's think about it. The input of this process is leaving home, and the output is arriving at work or school. But the commuting cannot be assessed by the fact that we have arrived. The performance of this process is evaluated by how much time we take to do it. So the commuting time is the outcome or response variable that we are going to use to evaluate the performance or efficiency of the process. Let's consider now the controllable factors, elements that we can control or choose when commuting to work and that can potentially affect the commute time. First, the way we commute. We can use a car, we can cycle, or we can walk. And even without doing any plan experiment, we already know that they can influence the time. Another factor is the time we leave home. At times with more traffic, we usually take longer to commute. And last, the route we take. These are factors or variables that can be tested, but we don't need to. For example, we can state that we are going to commute by using a car and we are not going to test cycling or walking. In this case, the mean of transportation will be kept constant. And the factors to be studied are the time we leave home and the route. Let's now imagine that we will test two living times, 7.30 and 8 a.m., and two different routes, using ABC Road or using XYZ road. However, these are not the only factors that influence the commute time. Everyone knows that in rainy or snowy days, we take more time to commute than in sunny days. The weather influences the commute time, but we cannot control it. It is an uncontrollable factor. In the same way, the time of the year. During school breaks and holidays, usually there is less traffic and we take less time to commute. 
Another example of uncontrolled factors are roadblocks or car accidents. They happen without us. These factors can be classified in two types, covariates that are the ones that can be measured as the weather conditions or the time of the year, and nuisance factors that are the ones that we cannot measure. Sometimes a car accident happens in our route, then we can measure it, but sometimes a car accident happens away from our route, but the consequences in the traffic affect our commute time. The uncontrolled factors are responsible for the natural variability, error, or noise in the system. The objectives of the experiments are to answer the following questions. First, which variables are most influential on the response? Maybe with the experiment we realize that the leaving time almost doesn't affect the commuting time, but the route has a strong effect. Second, where to set the variables to minimize or maximize the response? Meaning in this case, at which time and which route should we take to minimize the commuting time? And finally, where to set the variables to minimize the effect of uncontrolled factors. Not only we wish to minimize the commuting time, but we also would like to have the less possible variability in the commute time. 